Governor of Ondo State in Nigeria's southwest, Rotimi Akeridolu, senior advocate of Nigeria, has been receiving accolades from different stakeholders across the country for being the latest elected official to confront headlong the menace of killer herdsmen spreading terror in his state through armed robbery, destruction of individual farms, rape, and all manners of crime. Now, the ultimatum he gave those, quote, who occupy forest reserves in the state had been conveniently ignored until a meeting of the Nigeria Governors Forum and representatives of the pastoralists came up with a number of compromise positions in order to allow peace to reign. But how realistic are those agreed conditions? Well, joining us now to attempt an answer to that question and more is Dr. Tunji Abayomi, lawyer, human rights activist and pro-chancellor as well as Chairman, Governing Council of Adekunle Ajasin University in Ondo State. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Good morning. Well, Tabayomi, I just already asked the uh, <laughs> main question. It's quite uh, a pleasure to see you. Yes. Uh, party. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, quickly, I mean, you are from Ondo State, and yes. one of the major stakeholders in that uh, state. Yes. Uh, what's your view about uh, the uh, conflict we had recently over the rights of herders either to access the uh, forest reserves or to graze openly within the uh, communities. The steps taken by the governor and the intervention of the uh, uh, Nigeria Governors uh, Forum and the outcome of that meeting. Do you think that there are certain omissions that will still need to be addressed? Are you confident uh, that that meeting uh, has resolved the matter, short term and long term? Well, there was actually no major crisis. It's just that uh, there was what I would call exaggerated presumption of crisis. The governor acted according to law. The issue of um, reserved forest has been in Nigeria, I think, since um, February uh, 1938. That has always been a law regarding preservation of forest. I think it became part of Western region's law. I think it's CAP 38 in 1959. And when Ondo State was created in 1976, it became part of our law. The issue of regulating forests, forest reserve, and so on and so forth, has always been the prerogative of the government. I believe that the Land Use Act built on this when it invested all the land in the state uh, in the governor as custodian for the people. So the management of land granting right over it Preserving and reserving it has always been the prerogative of the governor and the government. And so the decision of the governor has legal support. And in this particular case, perhaps I also need to emphasize that the objective of the directive should also be understood. We have a situation, I just listened to uh, uh, the Senator Sonny, Shehu Sonny, is telling us the tragedy of the North, the really serious tragedy. Even if you do not appreciate the number of people that are killed, and we are talking of over 2,539 based on Global Terrorist Index since, since 2019, we should at least appreciate the volume of national money that is committed to, to that. I mean, we are talking of over 300 billion committed to uh, dealing with insurgency in the Northeast, as again 20 billion committed to education in the agreement with, uh, with ASU. So, 
I'm sorry, the objective of the governor has 100% support by the people of Ondo State. So, and I think it's in the interest of the country too. Mm. However, we cannot ignore those who are opposing that view and they say that, um, you know, the governor had no right to issue or vacate, uh, issue a quick notice for uh, herdsmen to vacate, what again is very important, the forest reserves. Uh, however, the argument is there. They say this was against the constitution and the rights of Nigerians to live wherever they find themselves. Are you surprised at that argument? There's no, no substance in the argument. I read the opinion of um, Dr. Junad Mohammed. I also read the opinion of um, Mike Ozekome. First and foremost, none of them can deny the existing law that invests authority on the government. Uh, in the case of uh, Michael Zekome, he, and I'm quoting from what he said, he said, it is crystal clear that the Ondo State governor and his government have control over all land within Ondo State territory. I'm quoting directly from him. So if you have control over the land and you have management over the land, and you have the Land Use Act, which is inputted in the Constitution, vesting the authority as custodian. I don't think it can be denied that you have the prerogative to decide who goes into the land and who does not. Now, there is this issue of uh, freedom of uh, movement and so on and so forth. Like I said, I mean, freedom of movement, nobody stops anybody from going to shop right, or even going to the governor's office. All that the governor is saying is that your freedom of movement does not exceed the freedom of movement that is granted to a citizen of Undo State. A citizen of Undo State cannot go to the reserve forest and do whatever he likes there. The other issue is that the freedom of movement or the freedom to reside anywhere is subject to overall uh, issue of security. If we look at section 14.2 of the Constitution, it makes it very clear that the primary purpose of government is to secure, is for the security and welfare of the people the security and welfare of the people. Naturally, all rights are useless unless you have the right to life. And so, in the name of, uh, natural, uh, in the name of state security, a number of decisions can be taken. I was detained under Abasha for merely criticizing uh, uh, the government in power, the dictatorship, and I'm, I asked the dictatorship to hand over to a civilian government. I was detained three times for national security purposes. So the mm -hmm. argument that you're making really have no substance at all, not okay. in law, not in logic, not okay. in morality, and not in expectation of the people oh, of okay. Nigeria. Dr. Issue, Tino, yes. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll go for a quick break. We'll come back to you, finish your thoughts, and we'll ask more questions. We'll be right back. Right. Welcome back to the Rise News Channel right here this morning. And we're speaking to Dr. Tujia Bayami, lawyer, human rights activist. Dr. Bayami, great insight you've been sharing as regards the law. And uh, you, you talked about all of this being wrong on the right of morality and the law and everything. But I just want to ask a question. So if the Rural Grazing Bill, RUGA, had been passed, or the Water Bill had been passed, will they in any way override the Land Use Act we have? That's one. And two, what's your reaction to the viral video now of the experience of Ulufalaye in the hands of herdsmen? Well, let me take Olu Falaye's case. It's just one of the many instances. Olu Falaye was lucky. 
there have been a lot more terrifying instances in Ondo State, as we are aware, a first class Oba was killed recently. There have been, uh, the register of um, uh, Futa was also killed by uh, Hartsman. And just yesterday, I was talking to a major who is a big farmer who says, this year he can't plant anything, whether cassava or anything. There are lots of terrifying instances. And in Ondo State, we are determined to ensure that Ondo State does not become the north, the northern part of Nigeria, by all means possible. This is a collective decision by the people. With regard to the Land Use Act, the Land Use Act is not inconsistent with any other law. It affirms the control of the land by the government. And you must also appreciate that in the southern part of Nigeria, there are simply no free land. Land either belongs to individuals or to communities. And if we look at the forest, forestry law, it sort of speaks you know, about that. But let me attend to one issue here, if you will allow me. Nigeria has very deep-rooted problems. Deep, deep-rooted. Unfortunately, if you take time to study this nation, you will see that every crisis of this nation gets worse as the year goes by. Let me repeat that. Every crisis of governance in Nigeria gets worse and worse as the year goes by. The question is, what really is the solution? If you have fundamental problem, the most sensible thing is to deal with it fundamentally, not superficially. Unfortunately, we don't have leaders that can take the necessary steps. If you look at America, America realized that the first constitution of America which is an article of confederation and perpetual union, which was adopted in November 15, 1777, was giving it an imperfect governance society. And so Ale Al Alexander Hamilton, a lawyer, in 1786, he called for a constitutional convention. Ultimately, in uh, 1787, September 17, they came up with the Constitution of America, Federal Constitution. That is because America is essentially one nation, one people, one culture, one language, one religion. But in Nigeria, we are many peoples, many nations. What is even essential about Nigeria that people appear not to recognize is that God in his wisdom, puts the different people in different geographical zones permanently. The Yorubas in the southwest, Ijos in the south-south, Ibos in the southeast, Kanuris in the northeast, Fulanis in the northwest. If you want to form a nation, the most sensible thing is to sit down on a table and agree. We have never done that. The first one was like a writ of summons by the British, we were summoned to Lancaster, and British had it his own way. The second world, by the military dictatorship, given us a constitution that told a lie about itself. The, of course, the military understood that the constitution must emerge from the people. So it says, we the people. In its own constitution, a constitution that is not, didn't originate from the people, but he said, we, the people, hereby give us ourselves a constitution, telling a lie. Until Nigeria, the nations, the peoples of Nigeria, come together and agree fundamentally on how they want Nigeria to be governed, there will be no peace, there will be no order, there will be no good government. What I'm saying now, maybe I will be gone many, in a number of years, you will remember what I have said now, that until this nation, the peoples, peoples of this nation come together, 
to agree on the terms of the government because it is not a government that gives a nation a constitution. It, it is a constitution that gives a nation a government. A constitution gives a nation a government. It is not a government that gives a nation a constitution. That is why Nigerian constitution is the only constitution in the world that is called Decree, Decree 24 of 1999. The military knew it had no power to give us a constitution. It has even no legal power and certainly no legit, legitimate power. A constitution emerges from the people. So if you want to solve the problem of Nigeria, including the problem of harassment, including the problem of Boko Haram, including the problem of poverty, including the problem of undevelopment, the people must come together. Do we really need a federation? Do we need a confederation? These are the issues we have to decide. If we are many people, then we should come, each person should bring their own excellencies. And then in a reapproachment, agree on how we want Nigeria to be. If we don't do that, the problem will continue to get worse and worse and worse. And at a point, if we are not careful, I do not know what Nigeria will become. Well, Dr. Abayomi, two quick issues. The first is, are you concerned about the uh, proliferation of all kinds of policing units, uh, particularly in the Southwest? One of the things thrown up uh, by uh, the recent incident in Ondo, Oyo, and Ogun State. On one hand, you had the uh, police, the regular uh, institution. Then you have Amotekun uh, also getting involved. And then you have an individual, uh, a certain uh, Sunday Adeyemo, uh, also known as uh, Igbo, Sunday Ubo, uh, who set up his own uh, security operation and ended up being a major factor uh, in, the, uh, in the conflict. That's one. Two, you are a member of the uh, technical committee that the governors of the Southwest uh, set up uh, to uh, propose a Southwest Development Commission yes. after the fashion of the Niger Data Development Commission, yes. the Northeast Development Commission. I mean, does the Southwest really need a body like that? Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with the contradiction that a state like Ondo uh, will be in the uh, uh, Niger Data Development Commission and at the same time, if the National Assembly passes the Southwest uh, uh, Development Commission bill, we'll also be in the Southwest uh, Development Commission. Is, is this, uh, these development commissions, are they just to be established after a fashion? Well, uh, in terms of uh, proliferation of um, uh, security, individual security athletes, <laughs> I have to tell you, we are moving towards a failed state in Nigeria. The situation in the north, northern part of Nigeria. I just listened to <laughs> Senator Shews on his saying that in Kaduna, now we are talking of Kaduna that should be a secure zone. He can barely move out of his home after five o'clock. We are moving towards a failed state in Nigeria. Unfortunately, the truth is, is that government and governance, in terms of its primary objective, the security and welfare of the people, is failing if it has not entirely failed. In a situation like that, people will take all necessary steps to secure their lives. You look at a situation where you cannot, I'm from Akoko in Ondo State. Traveling from Akure to Akoko, a distance of just one and a half miles, has become an ordeal. So if you now want to travel and you cannot get security or assured security from the government, what do you do? You have to find a way in order to secure your life. And the right to life is the first of all rights. Now, in terms of um, uh, Southwest Development um, uh, Commission, we need development commission. I mean, this money comes from uh, the federal government. We have South-South Development Commission. We have states there that belong into, that have 
different advantages. We have Northeast Development Commission. I see nothing wrong with Southwest Development Commission. If you can advance development by any means, it will be very good. And I think also that it allows for some level of independence, which we need, development independence, which I believe we need in Southwest. Again, we need to emphasize that in our country, there are different, uh, I think different people have different excellencies and different interests, different objectives, different nations in Nigeria. So if we have a greater level of independence in Southwest, we will be able to do more, I believe, in terms of development, because our people are actually disappointed in the Southwest with the advancement of um, their, their, their lives. The thinking of the Southwest is that by now we should be being pari pasu, moving like Israel, like South Korea, and so on and so forth, that were basically more or less in the same zone, the same rating as, um, as this nation in, uh, in 1960. So in terms of software developments, going, okay, there are some nations, some states may have advantage, but I don't think it should defeat the primary objective of development in the zone. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tunji Abayomi, uh, for joining us and for your uh, insights. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much.